That is a fascinating sighting with Ali, and I hope that she spends a bit more time there. We've also had... Shh, David. <laughs> She's throwing around in the back of the car there. <laughs> We've also had a really fascinating sighting. <laughs> One of the cubs climbed up a tree and pulled a stick down, and now the rest of them kind of want it, but they can't quite get it. But I don't think... David, do you think you've ever seen a lion look so pleased with itself? No. I don't think I've ever seen a lion look as pleased with itself as that one did. It was so proud of itself. It was high. It had to climb up really high to go and get that stick. And one's managed to get the other end. Ah, I found a stick of my own. I'm going to go over here with my stick away from your stick because it's better than the stick. Well, Mum and Aunt are fast asleep. Cheese potatoes, uh, potato, well, potatoes, potato, potato, potato. Um, no, vultures, no. Vultures are not really hunting birds. They don't, they scavenge, they don't really attack smaller creatures in the way that martial eagles might. But yes, a martial eagle like the one that you saw with Ali, or one of the larger eagle species, perhaps a crowned eagle in certain areas, they can and do attack cubs, they attack wild dog pups, leopard cubs, lion cubs. If they are small and out in the open without the adults to guard them, it is an unusual but a possible sighting that could that, that one could witness it does happen. It is unusual though. But yes, a, a tiny lion cub, these lion cubs are now past that age where they are vulnerable to an eagle. When I first brought Lexi, my, my Vimarana, into the bush, she, when she was a tiny, tiny puppy, I spent the first few weeks of the, li the dog's life paranoid, absolutely paranoid, that an eagle was going to come and swoop down and take her. And it does happen. I mean, people lose, I mean, when she was little, obviously she grew past the size of where she would be threatened by an eagle, but people do lose dogs, little dogs, on a relatively regular basis in South Africa, especially, to things like eagles, martial eagles, crowned eagles. They are responsible for the loss of many a beloved family pet, and in the wild, the odd cub as well. Ah, this one didn't get a stick. Not very happy with life. You could go and climb and get one if you wanted to. We have a really, really lovely question coming through from Michelle, who is a 13-year-old in Johannesburg and nearly 14 years old. And Michelle is right at that point in in her life where she's got to choose her school subjects right up until matric. Michelle, you're wondering about which subjects you should take in order to become a field guide, and I hope that you are still watching because it's it's actually a really it's a really lovely thing to hear that that's something that you want to do. And what you can do is contact Final Control in the way that you have already and they can put you into contact with me so I'll be able to give you a little bit of further advice or warn you in advance I don't have all that much time for correspondence but I would really love to to help you along if that is what you decide to do so subjects I think it ob most obviously is biology biology will really help you but none of these subjects I'm just looking to see what they're looking at sorry <laughs> Sorry. None of these subjects are absolutely essential, so there's a huge degree of flexibility when becoming a field guide. Biology will help you, um, so will science, especially physics. I've found so many problems have been solved by a little bit of background knowledge of physics to help me do certain things, especially as a relatively small human being, um, to overcome the, the odd physics problem in terms of lifting something greater than my own weight into the back of a vehicle it, it's useful to have as a, as a method as a problem solving method languages are always an advantage so if you um one of the things i regret most deeply about my school career is that i didn't actually do zulu all the way through to matric or one of those languages but it would be really very very helpful for you however another language like french or german or spanish those sorts of things are really helpful because it, it gives you that little bit of a one-up 
because then you can speak to guests who don't speak English all that well. Let me tell you something very important about becoming a field guide though. Something that you should know from the very beginning is that if you are really keen on becoming a guide specifically, because there's lots of ways to work with the animals out here, there's lots of ways to work in the bush, but if you're interested in becoming a guide, one of the things you must realize is that a lot of that is people-based as well. So although the animals are important, people are too, and your people skills are as well. And knowing, having a little bit of general knowledge more than anything else, being able to talk to people about what's happening in their lives, as much as the animals will dominate the conversations that you have, it is very useful to sit around dinner or wherever you happen to be and be able to discuss certain things. So just bear in mind that that is an important aspect of the job as well. You've got to like and enjoy meeting different people from all walks of life and spending quite a lot of quite a lot of time with them. But if you think that that's for you, I'd love to give you more advice. I grew up in Johannesburg as well. I know all about it. Feel free to give me, a, well, to get hold of me. Okay, all right, with on that note, I will be seeing you hopefully periodically throughout the evening. Let's send you back across to Ali with her big bird of prey and probably its kill. <laughs>